And we are live. Welcome, everybody, to the weekend woke up call number four. Protect your back holes. We will probe the abductables today. Our special guest is Michael Derrick. Michael, how are you this morning? Doing good. Thanks for having me. Oh, uh, hopefully pleasure. we Thank can teach people uh, proper back hole safety in the stream. <laughs> I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so. And joining me once again, the enigmatic man of mystery, the well Hungarian, Mr. Man of Sex. <laughs> I'm a Hungarian now. <laughs> now I'm hungry for goulash. Ooh, goulash. The real question the is. Avatar. The real question is how much should one enema before probing, Michael? I mean, the more the better, really. You don't want to make a mess on the spaceship. Do you prefer a box <laughs> wine or a coffee enema? Um, probably coffee, you know, gets you energized. It could, uh, you tend to be pretty groggy after you get abducted, so it's probably a good idea to get some caffeine in your system. Yeah, box wine is not good. No one do box wine enemas out there. Yeah, you're already going to be uh, disoriented, so you don't need to get drunk as well. I thought that's what mm -hmm. the spout was for, though. For box wine? Yeah, is that not why they put the spout on it? No, that's a bidet, you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Spanish wine. And uh, in Spain, they have a lot of bidets, which we're kind of behind in the United States. But and again, any bathroom that has a sink is a bidet in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, remind me never to use the sink while I'm at your house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think uh, there's enough water pressure to pull that off. <laughs> you got you got to put your thumb underneath the spout you know how you, you do with the garden hose yeah you well of... I, you know those tasmanian devil ones that they put in the sink and it turns into a water fountain yes it's one of those i got one of those on there <laughs> that's awesome and they're like oh do you have kids i'm like no <laughs> <laughs> weird looking sues <laughs> So, Michael, congratulations on getting funded once again. Yes, Everyone clap. Thank you. Everyone yes. clap. Yes. Congrats. Yeah, I, I think that's that. great. It yeah, looks it's... great. Yeah, so you great. don't even need yeah. us, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, We're irrelevant. Uh, yeah, it's uh, still got 10 days left on the campaign, so that's pretty good to, to be funded already. Um, I guess it happened last night. I was asleep because... I worked the night shift, but uh, it was a, a nice little thing to wake up to to see that we were funded. So, Very nice. That is probably very nice to wake up to. We got Tinfoil yes. Hat in the chat. Good morning, Tinfoil Hat. Hail. Hey, man. Yeah, he's a uh, Tinfoil Hat. He's been very supportive of the campaign, so shout out to him. Yeah, he's been um, pushing it pretty well as well. I Nick, is there, Nick is a super fan. I mean, he's uh, he's awesome. He's uh, I'm pretty sure he's been here every stream so far that we've had. Mm -hmm. uh, I was sharing the link out. He's just he's awesome. It's good to have you around, bud. Nice. Good. Man. I've made a few memes for it as well. I made the um, oh, which ones did I make for you? I made some quick ones. The Shia LaBeouf meme. Oh yeah, yeah, and then that uh, that kid dancing around. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not related. Those are good. <laughs> yeah, that was, those were entertaining. So you want to go over the book? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so uh, in case you don't, in case you aren't aware, uh, The Abductables is a 52-page sci-fi action comedy about what happens when aliens abduct Arnold Schwarzenegger from Commando, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> Not literally for legal reasons, but, you know, he's basically, yeah. uh, our main character is basically just the uh, amalgamation of every uh, great 80s action hero who's probably on steroids and probably has some void rage in him. And, uh, yeah, obviously he's not too happy to wake up on the ship and see that he's about to be probed by <laughs> little gray aliens, so... A lot of uh, much-deserved violence ensues, and he proceeds to kill everything on the ship in spectacular fashion. So, now this this uh, is the cover, correct? Yes, that here. is the cover. Um, 
we did have a uh, version of it with a logo, but since we're tweaking the logo now, I, I took it off and it's just the cover art without any anything on it. But we're going to have all that dead space at the top where the flying saucer, that's where the logo is going to go. And uh, we'll probably have a pretty clever tagline on there as well. So, but yeah, that's uh, the, the book's in grayscale, but the cover is in full color as uh, colored by the great Canalis. So. So yeah, he did this? an awesome job coloring yeah. that too. Did he do this with an airbrush? Yeah, uh, he, he yeah digitally, uh, digital airbrush. Uh, yeah, he's great at coloring his own work. Who would have would have known? Um, it, it's man, great because it reminds talent. me of like uh, van art kind of the way yeah. it's airbrushed. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that would look nice on a on a van <laughs> or like laser Dude, tag. No kidding. Yeah, <laughs> I was like so big the laser tag in the early aughts in the nineties. You'd have something like this right on the wall. <laughs> the early so, aughts. How old are you, dude? <laughs> aughts. The aughts. Like my grandma used to say that, but I mean, she was talking about like the 1900s. <laughs> the 2000s are the aughts. The oddies. You know, with Frost and Young or old? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> your grandma's young, man. The aughts are the 2000s, my dude. Pretty sure she was referring to like 1904 when she was talking about the aughts. Yeah, well, just the second aughts, well, you know, with frosted that's what's, tips. That's what's going to be uh, cool about next year is we're going to be living in the roaring 20s again. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> hey, that's true. Yeah, isn't that weird? Like, And the prohibition this time is memes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the tens. No one says that, but it'll be cool to say, hey, we live in the 20s. Are the thoughts the flapper girls? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally right. are. <laughs> that's uh, the equivalent of the flappers. So yeah, we definitely don't have enough. Uh, you know, you said the eighties action movies; those those big buff stars. Like you just, we just don't have those really anymore. You got yeah. John Cena out there; he's probably your you're probably the big one in Hollywood right now. You know, started in wrestling, but really. He's out there making movies. The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, he's kind of followed suit as well. But we just don't have enough. There's not enough Dolph Lundgrens and Arnolds out there just being big, huge, manly men. Yeah, unfortunately not. Uh, I think any, on the rare occasion that a big, muscular guy does come around, uh, he, he's more likely to go to WWE than Hollywood these days. Yeah. And then uh, all those Probably because it's guys, more fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and plus, I mean, what roles would they play? They don't make those kinds of movies anymore with the with the big action heroes. So, I mean, if they want to make a living, they're better off being a wrestler. And yeah, then, I mean, uh, everything's just so yeah. soy. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, look at the new... Go oh, ahead. the new He-Man? <laughs> yeah, that is exactly what I was going to say. The new He-Man. Oh, he yeah. oh, my God. Yeah, exactly. I think the new he he man comes with a Tampax pad. <laughs> now this is one of my favorite uh, parts of the strip right here, where he's just popping the alien's head. That's still one of my favorite. Uh, that's yeah, great. That one, thanks. That one always gets a good reaction. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's fantastic. It's all hilarious. Yeah, so is this uh, is is this a is this a one shot or is this going to be an ongoing or uh, are you doing multiple volumes? Um, it is a one shot. Uh, the, the whole story is all contained in the book. Um, it has a definitive ending. So you don't, you know, you don't have to worry about uh, it being a to be continued kind of scenario. But um, that being said, I do have a pretty awesome idea for a sequel if there is a demand for it. Um, so we'll, we'll see what, what people think, but yeah, there. I definitely have a really awesome sequel in mind. And nice. the abductables. I, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> and the abductables are also doing a season pass with DLC. You can send the money <laughs> right to Mike. <laughs> oh God! Don't don't uh don't give the comic <laughs> industry any ideas. <laughs> I already had that thought. Actually, it didn't work. <laughs> Like, hey, I've got 12 issues that I'm going to provide for you. You give me all the money now, and then uh, I'll ship your books when they're done. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, I'll do it. I will. It just might take me a couple years. 
That's why I never buy video games until like three years after the release, so you can get all the DLC for half the price. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I so, think the uh, Collectibles would make a great video game. Yeah, definitely. I think so too. I know you guys I mean, were on uh, with with Jean Luc, and he's he's big on the IPs, and he was very adamant yeah. about this possibly becoming the first uh, CG IP. Yeah, if uh, if the Abductables ever becomes a movie, you can thank Jean Luc for that because he's got the uh, Hollywood hookups, and he yeah, like you said, he's very adamant about uh, possibly pitching that to some people. So, I mean, that's. Uh, I would definitely need his help to to pull that off. So yeah, that would be awesome if that did happen. Well, if he well, if, actually, uh, uh, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say if if he if 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 Jean Luc and McGee ever got their shit together, we'd actually have an IP stream where we could learn about this kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I was looking forward to that. They never <laughs> did it. Um, like yeah, and on that stream, I told him like, uh, dude, you you should like open up your own like business where you just like help like indie creators like uh pitch their stuff to Hollywood cuz i mean who knows how to do that like exactly that's, not that's a lot not of people not the easiest thing in the world so yeah he can be kind of like an agent and uh we can go through him to to pitch to these Hollywood executives He's a busy man too though i imagine he doesn't have a whole lot of downtime in his life Yeah i mean yeah he's working on his own comic that's going to be launching pretty soon so I know, and his art, man, he is, uh, he's really got something special there. Yeah, he's, he must be like a, like an artistic genius or something because he's only, like, he says he only started drawing like a year ago and his stuff already looks great. So I know, I look at him like, really? Like, I can't, I've been trying to draw for years and I still just come up with stylized stick figures. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's some natural talent he has for sure. Yeah, I actually am working on a uh, a fan piece for Crystal McGee's The Good Night that I have not revealed yet. Ooh, nice. Ooh. Okay, yeah, so, you, so do, hopefully, uh, like, you do draw, or is it just like specifically for that? Uh, I draw just a little bit. Um, I I don't have much talent at all, uh, <laughs> uh, and <laughs> and also. Uh, <laughs> Again, the time, the time, I don't really have a whole lot of time to really get yeah. good at drawing either. But I do, I do sketches. I do a little bit here and there. I got a sketch up of uh, of a uh, the superhero that I'm working on right now. I did the the concept sketch for that, and I'm working on this fan piece for McGee that uh, hopefully comes out pretty good. It's it's essentially uh, it's it's an homage to uh, the corn issues cover uh, with oh, the doll. Yeah. Yeah, Only it's, with the uh, teddy bear. It's gonna be the teddy bear. Yeah. Oh, that's a cool idea. Yeah, I thought uh, I was I it. I was thinking I wanted to do something, and I was like, man, that'd be really cool to do. Yeah, yeah, that right there. But and then make that the uh, the teddy bear, you know, like holding his sword and yeah. just kind of laying there. Yeah, are you also gonna do it with cornrows? <laughs> you should do I your could, hair up I, in cornrows. I could do my hair up in cornrows. I do have very long hair. I could. Get a lip piercing. There I don't go. have a lip piercing. I did. Uh, I did have to. Back in the day. I, I did have to dox my ass to Lola <laughs> the other night uh, because she didn't believe that I had an ass tattoo of Tennessee. Of the state Tennessee. Yeah, the state. The outline of the state. <laughs> That's some uh, state pride right there. Wow. Um, I'm from Illinois. <laughs> and you got okay, a tattoo so you, of Tennessee. So you uh lost a bet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This was the the main this was the main event for today's show, believe it or not. I don't know how we got off on oh yeah, we started talking about pita and cow's milk, and then we got off on vegan <laughs> and all kinds of other stuff. I downvoted the video because of PETA. Why did they do that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's all it's all related, like uh Aliens, they, they have some kind of weird obsession with cows, with the cattle mutilations, and, um, you know, who knows what that's all about. And then what are the little gray aliens, if not uh, highly evolved soy boys? And then, of course, you have the uh, toxically masculine male killing them all in space. So 
you know, it, it ties together. They abduct the action hero and they abduct the cows and probe them. You know, I'm still waiting for that secret bulge collection version that was meant to be made for me. <laughs> the bulge edition. That's the, the bulge that's going to be the deluxe copy. <laughs> it's the deluxe. Everything is, yeah, everything is then uh, airbrushed like this. And then the bulges are more emphatic. Yeah, that's uh, that's probably the biggest criticism Roe gave me was that the bulges weren't nearly big enough. So He likes uh, a big bulge. He's a bulge. Yeah. Runner. We're going to have to go back in and edit that and add some more meat for him. Make it bulgier. Bulgier. It, it, it looks like a great book. I think it's... So, yeah, you want to go ahead and... Uh, a fantastic video game. Oh, go ahead. Too. Yeah. What do you want to go ahead and do? Dude, I was just going to say, uh, Michael wants to go ahead and do his pitch. Yeah, let's do his pitch. Sell it to us, baby. Are you going to read it, or do you want me to just pitch it now? I'm not pitching your shit. <laughs> yeah, pitch <go> it. <laughs> <laughs> pitch it, bitch. I'm just trying to think, is that like a, can, how can that be reinterpreted pitching? Uh... <laughs> As catching. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so uh, The Abductables. It's a uh, sci-fi action comedy. Uh Written by me with art by the great Ebai Canales of Iron Sights fame. You may have heard of him. Uh, it's about a uh, big muscular dude who uh, gets abducted by aliens and wakes up on the probing table and proceeds to kill everything that moves. And uh, we go from there. That's just the beginning of the book. There's uh, plenty of twists and turns along the way. Uh, when the, the main character, the abductee as we call him, when he wakes up on the ship, he is an amnesiac. He doesn't remember who he is or how he got there. So uh, once he does regain his memories, that's uh, the story takes a bit of a turn. And it's a nice little twist there that I don't want to give away. So, uh, yeah, if uh, that sounds like a cool concept to you, I think you should definitely check it out. Um, we just we got funded finally uh, yesterday last night so uh we are we are fully funded so the book is guaranteed to be in your hands so if uh but we still need help and we still have about nine days left in the campaign so if uh if it, it, the book sounds like something you're interested in please uh back the book uh order your copy and uh let's make it happen maybe we can get some uh some stretch goals going on here stretch. that's actually what I'm, I no was pun intended really but... glad you just brought that up i wanted uh I meant to ask you what uh, what are some what do you got going for stretch for stretch goals this time around? Um, so I was thinking that the the first stretch goal should be a uh, we'll actually get all the backers will get a free uh, rectal probing. I think uh, the, 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 that'll be uh, yeah, that's well, to be yeah. I think I, you know it, it fits with the theme of the book. I think people will be really into that. So <laughs> yeah, free probes for everybody. Yeah, you should send a colonoscopy ticket out to everybody <laughs> for your nearest physician. At least some like a like a could like a bottle of lube or something. Oh, there you go. Some rectal gel. Also, you can insert the comic book into your ass. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's what the uh, the second copy is for. I mean, uh, $25 here. Yeah, I mean if you roll it up, it is kind of phallic in a way, so that, that could work. Yeah, just include a plastic dome with it so they can roll it up with the dome on top and then insert. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you just uh, ship it. You just ship it in a tube. It's uh, very <laughs> tube ship. Oh god. Yeah, but uh, I, I had I had a whole thing of uh, stretch goals in mind, but uh, I, based on how the campaign was going, I kind of moved some stuff around, and I actually. Uh, some of the uh, initial stretch goals I decided to add to the book to give it some more value. So uh, one of those is uh, we're going to be uh, mailing out a digital PDF file to all backers um, that contains behind the scenes content. So it'll, it'll kind of show you how the book came together, uh, the making of in a way. Um, so it'll have like uh, character designs, uh, sketches, uh, showing you the evolution of a page from pencils to inks. And the, it'll have the full script uh, written by me. So 
it'll it'll give you a nice little insight into the book. And like I said, that's included for all backers. Um, and then uh, there will also be a community art gallery. Um, so anybody who sends in fan art of the abductables before the campaign ends will be featured in the book. Um, yeah, so we're going to add a few pages to feature that. So and we've already got a few uh, submissions already. So it'll it'll be a nice little gallery at the back of the book. And then um, it, as well as that, uh, we'll have a uh, thank you page for all the backers. So everybody who backed the book at any tier will uh, have their name in the book as a thank you. So uh, be a nice credits page as a show some appreciation to all our backers. So very nice, dude. I always love those in these uh, the in the crowdfunding books is when you get to the when you when you're done reading it, you get to the end and you get to you see a list of everybody that that helped put that book together in a sense. You know, everybody that contributed to it, which I just yeah. I just think it's cool. It's really yeah, cool. absolutely. I think everybody uh, likes to see their name or username in print. It's a uh, it's kind of nice to see and. Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, it, it it was something that I I realized like halfway through the campaign. It's like you know what I should just add that like that should be that I should have added that from the beginning. Like that's the least I can do to show my appreciation appreciation to everybody who backed the book. So yeah, there there will be a thank you page. Awesome, very awesome. So that way someone can pick it up in five or six years and be like, "What the hell is fucking man of sex?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, what <laughs> usernames people uh, decide to be listed under. Um, Boogerman69 or something like that. Exactly, <laughs> cocky. <laughs> hey, if that's what if that's what they put, I gotta I gotta print it. So. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, that is awesome. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming today. Uh, once again, I'm Adam AF. Subscribe. Hit like. Ring the bell for notifications. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Adam underscore A underscore F. Uh, tune in next week. We actually have a bit of a schedule uh, lined up so far. Uh, next week, the 6th, we're going to have Clint Stoker, a.k.a. Sweetcast, on the show to talk about his uh, campaign that's going to launch. Um, the 13th, we're going to have the mighty Crystal McGee, uh, the author of The Good Night. She's going to come on. Hers is ending that weekend. And then the 20th, our 420 Spectacular, we are going to have Matt Winger and Joseph Ball from Super Harem. And uh, it's also Man of Sex's birthday. Woo! Today? No, the or 20th. Then. Oh, the 20th. 420. Yeah, 420. 420, baby. You burn out, you. <laughs> <laughs> Man of you... Sex, anything you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, you can follow me at uh, Man of Sex underscore on Twitter. Um, I may be doing a photoshopping memes live stream here soon on YouTube. Um, I also have a little book myself coming out with a friend, mainly his book. I will help promote it. So you may have seen it soon here as it's being wrapped up by the artist. Um, and that's about it. Buy the abductables. Yes, back the abductables. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks for All having right, me thanks on. This everybody. was a fun chat. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We'll see you all next week. Thanks, everybody.